Hey everybody, all you cabin lovers out there, welcome back to another episode of My Dream Log Cabin. I'm excited here today with, again, our founder and owner, David Byler. Uh, yesterday, I was just telling David a story that happened yesterday here in the office. A client walked in and started asking us questions about HVAC units and log homes. Being here in Idaho, we're having a heat wave and uh, she was kind of concerned all of a sudden <laughs> about how that's gonna play out. And I knew, of course, if you were here, you would have some really great insight uh, for her. And, and it kind of gave me this idea to do this podcast episode. So, David, tell us what you know about HVAC systems in log homes. Should people have them? What different options are there? You know, different things that we can chat about. Well, uh, certainly they can be put in. Uh, you know, in this area, there's a lot of homes that don't have HVA systems as far as air conditioning. And because they use hydronic heat a lot. Hydronic heat, which is the, the, the hot water through the floors, is an excellent way to heat a log home. So, so then to add a H, to air conditioning to that is, um, is, a, is another system. So the, now all of a sudden we're looking at two systems. Mm. In some parts of the country, um, especially in the Midwest, uh, they hardly, you hardly ever see the, the hot water heating in the floors. It's, 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 really? it's not that common. They all put the uh, forced air units in because, uh, I think mostly because uh, air conditioning is more important than the heat. Mm. And um, so here we use what you call mini splits in some areas and uh, certainly put them in. In Coeur d'Alene, all the houses that we built down there on the, in the golf course, we put them all in. What yeah. is that? Tell us a little bit more. What does that mean, mini-split? A mini-split is a is an air-conditioned unit that the unit sits outside and then the, the Freon pipes run up into a, a unit that's a, an individual unit that's that's mounted in a room. Okay. A, a mini-split, like the one we just did in Montana, it has four or five mini-splits in it. Mm, wow. So it works very well, um, in, especially in an area where, um, uh, in a house where there's no attic space. Okay, because that was my next question. Is yeah. like how so? So I'm picturing by what you're saying. I'm picturing the unit is outside, just mm -hmm. like what I'm used to in yep. Arizona. Yep. But rather than it coming in and being piped through ductwork, it's got some other system. So tell us, how does that system look in the house? What does uh, it look like? it, it's it varies in size, but there is a unit that's in the house. It can be in the wall, and it's probably three foot wide by a foot high, and all the air that that comes cold air that comes from that unit is 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 only there it's not in your your duct worked all over the place mm. and, uh, and so so um and then you then, then it's very typical to put that in maybe a bedroom or uh or an area where you want to cool it off mm -hmm. in, in this area we need air conditioning two or three weeks out of the year at the most right and people like to open the windows and smell the the pine trees and and, and don't really want it yeah. And and uh, however, so that that is very common here. However, we do do uh, a complete HVA system in many 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 homes that we've built, just not right here. Okay. Uh, and 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 even with no attics, uh, they are a little different because the the ideally there's a basement or a big crawl space and the duct work is all run below, and um, it works great. It it, it works great. It it. The cold air return, um, there's a little bit of thought that needs to go into that. And typically, if there's a loft, that would be up there. And we pull the cold air down and, and, and come up through. I, I was skeptical the first time that it, this was many years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, when an HVAC guy said that he could cool this house with without having uh, any um, anything up on top, everything. Because I was used to having a cold air return up and... And, or or the, the the cold air coming in on the top and then the cold air return at the bottom, but it, it works very very well. Uh, it's just that if you use that type of cooling, you and a different type of heating, that sometimes can be uh, a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. The the good thing about uh, air conditioning in a log home, it's a little bit the same way as heat is. There's a lot of thermal mass there, so you cool the logs down. The room is cool. That air does not displace very fast at all, so the rooms will stay cool much longer than a conventional drywall home will. Right. 
So open and close the windows, and uh, it doesn't heat the, the, the home up. So, so there's people that um, uh, really enjoy that part of it. And it was hard. We've had people that moved in from another type of a home, and they were always concerned about leaving the windows and doors open during the day for just as quickly as they can shut it because it would heat the house up. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and here it doesn't happen right. b- because you have all that thermal mass in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about, I know I'm playing devil's advocate, yeah. but that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, what about these beautiful log homes with these huge bay windows? I mean, yeah. does that seem to be like a magnifying glass for the sun? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, it, it sure is, if, especially if they're pointed toward the west. And we always like to design with, with big overhangs, try to keep the sun out till 5 or 6 o'clock at night. But even then, uh, uh, it, it makes a, there's some really, you know, good things you can do for that. One of them is um, the tinted glass has come a long ways. Mm-hmm. And then the, the blinds that are actually in the glass, so you never have to clean them mm. with the little remote control. I love those. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. You, you got about a dozen remote controls laying by your desk anymore, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- that does work good. Hey, if, yeah. nowadays my, my son would tell you, just get an Alexa and you can yeah. tell it to do it all for you. <laughs> well, I, I, I did see that the blinds now are, are, uh, capable with Alexa and Siri or whoever that is. Oh my gosh, isn't it getting amazing, (laughs) isn't it? Yeah. Actually, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you as far as um, these HVAC units. I assume it's a yes, but you know, I'm just curious. Does it have like a digital thermometer so it will keep it to a certain temperature and turn off? Like does it have, that's where the return part comes in, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it sure does. They're very, one thing that I've just learned, one of the homes we did recently um, it, it, they, they've got a smart thermometer that keeps the temperature at a certain temperature. If it goes at night, it goes down uh, up two degrees in the morning and all that. But but how you hear this this um, rushing of air through many HVA systems? They now have little diverters that go in the duct, which would be down in your floor in a log home. That it's so quiet, you you can't hear anything. Oh, wow. You can hardly hear anything. Yet the air is still coming through. Uh, a good HVAC guy can room pretty much the same temperature everywhere. That's incredible. It is. It is. And I'm sure design plays into it too, because yeah. I mean, just like heating, if yeah. you're going to have your heat source in a, in one spot, you want to make sure that heat dis- disseminates properly to keep the whole house, you know, heated the way you want it. And I'm sure design comes into that. Can you talk to us a little more about how design can affect that? Uh, it, it well, it certainly can. We, we, you know, we have to have a chase to bring the air upstairs to downstairs, like you would in a conventional house. However, with a log house, there isn't a lot of attic space. Often, it's big cathedral ceilings. So, uh, uh, over bedrooms and bathrooms, there's a ceiling put in, and those are all things that we have to be thinking about in design. It's not a lot. It's surprisingly how little we have to do the design to make one of these systems work. However, if you don't think about it and you block everything off, it, it, it does become a pretty big deal. Right. Yeah. And you know what else? I was just thinking about this because, uh, you know, people like me who, who may be relocated from somewhere hot mm-hmm. to somewhere like this, you might just assume houses are made with HVAC. Yeah. I would have assumed that initially. Um, so it may not even occur to me to ask my designer if that's factored in, I would have just maybe considered yeah. that's already done. So it's probably important for people to know to talk about that. No, it's a good idea. It's very good. And more and more people even here are asking for HVAC in, in, uh, in their log homes. And we, we, my wife and I just built one two years ago. We decided not to put it in. She likes to open and close the windows. However, we did design the chases and everything is there when we want to put it in. Oh, that's a good idea. We use the hydronic heat, which we've always had and really like, and mm-hmm. decided just to design the home with the, the chases that need to be put in now in. The floor trusses are designed with a, with a duct in it, and uh, it didn't cost us very much more at all to put that in. And then when we want to, we can add the, the AC. Clever. Yeah. Well, if summers keep going like this one, yeah. you might do that next year. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> the, the other thing that does happen is people with allergies more and more are, are getting these AC units with uh, the filters that that help incredibly much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have one person that comes to our house that has bad allergies, and in the springtime with the wind blowing, uh, 
that that was tough for us to realize that we couldn't welcome that person. That person didn't really feel comfortable in our house uh, with that, with that going on. Mm, yeah. yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Okay, so in a log home, you're basically saying that the ductwork would mostly be hidden in the walls rather than in the interior walls. In in, in the floors mostly. Okay. In, okay. Below the floor, and then if there's a loft, which there very often is, uh, there'd be a chase that goes up from the floor into the loft. And there we would do more ductwork. And if there is an attic space, which is very typical over bathrooms or, um, or sometimes bedrooms, uh, th- then of course it would be very much like a conventional one. But we have done some homes. If you remember Don, the, the one we did in um, Montana, it had absolutely no attic space. Every room, every bathroom in a 5,000 square foot is all cathedral. Mm-hmm. So, so and it's three stories and it's three stories yeah. so so we we are left with little options but that mini split for and and they work great they really do work great you can put the unit anywhere you want to and run pipes up to it there is this um a little bit of an unsightly thing where instead of a, just a register or a duct you see this unit hanging up on the wall mm. And, and it's not built into the wall. It's it can be wall? built into the oh. wall partially, but it's, oh, okay. it sticks out. And it's, and 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 there's trims you can put on there, but it is something that you do notice. Mm-hmm. And from that unit, uh, air is diverted into that room. Okay. And that unit always has its own little remote control, smart thermometer, everything on it. And mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, so that that is what what happens with with those. I, I, I suppose that, that we could probably run everything through the, through the floor and have a, a central unit like we would on a conventional house many times. Uh, however, it becomes a little, bit, a little bit difficult to build that up high enough to get the cold air and, and everything to run through. So, that so, makes sense. So the, so the mini split, is, as, as what it's referred to, is a very good option. Well, and, you know, when we talk about, like, people who are thinking about this now before they've gotten to the design phase, um, you know, and maybe they want to consider an option that kind of combines heating and cooling. Is that, not, are you saying that's not really recommended? You would do two separate different No, 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 or? I would recommend that. If, if, you were built, if you were building in an area uh, that air, AC was important, you certainly want to use that same system for the heat. Uh, and, and there you can use a heat pump, you can use, you know, there's all kinds. There's, mm-hmm. there's um, propane. There's natural gas. There's even electric, and that that actually heats that. And then the um, the AC unit would be part of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as like where to place, I mean, where we would place the AC systems would be pretty much the same as where we would put the heating sources. So it, putting it all together would make sense if you yeah. could. So if you could do a new home for yourself, would you do anything different than? The one you have, <laughs> like if you started all over again. You know, my wife and I would probably disagree on which would be most important. But I asked her yesterday because we have this heat wave right now. I said, "Should have we put AC in?" And she said, "Not yet. I still like this. This heat's okay." It it, it did get up to uh, in our house without any AC. We d- we did get up to like seventy nine or eighty in the house during the day, but it's insulated well and. And it's 105 outside. Mm-hmm. But we open and close the windows. So it, it uh, at night, we yeah. open the windows. And we like that. Mm-hmm. We like that a lot. And it cools it down. Yeah. But but that's here in North Idaho. That's right. not everywhere. Yes. Um, so I don't think we change that because we're happy with what we have. Right. Maybe someday we'll want to, but but that one's fine. Yeah. yeah. And the heating system with the uh, hydronic heat in the floor, uh, we really like that. And this is the third home we've built, and it's the second one that had that, and that was one thing that we... Let's talk about that a little yeah. bit more, because yeah. I think I think that's a system my neighbors have, and I've walked into their house, and I don't even think about it, because it's not a, something I'm used mm-hmm. to, but when I they always have me take my shoes off when I go to their house, yeah. and when I step on their floor, I'm always like, oh, how? It just surprises me every time, because I'm not expecting the warm floor, you know? But they have if they have a boiler. Do mm-hmm. you have something like mm-hmm. that? We do. Let, have, let's talk about that system and how that works. Like, what kind of maintenance is involved in that? Uh, the boilers are, are there's a little maintenance, very little. They've come a long, long ways, but um, it, they need to be properly installed. And and one thing, one complaint that I've heard about them is we can't cool the house down. Mm-hmm. In the morning, it's cold, and it gets hot in there, and it just it does what it's supposed to do. It keeps it hot in there. 
because you have a light lightweight concrete or something on your floor typically you can do it another way too and so that heats up the logs heat up and it just it's just warm in there mm. uh, but an expert that puts that in there is careful on how he does it this time this is the second time we did it now we made sure that there was no heat in our pantry Oh, we made good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that door is often shut, and then that heat would go in there, and it would get the pantry too warm. Yeah. And then we put a little bit extra heat, a little extra pipes. It's just pipes in the concrete. Okay. But the more you put in, the more zones you put in, the more uh, you, can, you can heat that area up fast, and you can feel it in our bathrooms. In our bedrooms, it's not important. We put another zone in there because we like our bedroom to cool off at night. And but the bathrooms, the step out of the shower on the warm floor, it just doesn't feel bad at all. Right. Yeah. And what's interesting to me about that is, or what I guess I wonder is, with like our hard water here, yeah. Do, do you have to like run something, a chemical through there to clean out the calcium buildup, or is that an issue ever? How does that uh, work? It, it 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 we we don't put water in it. We use glyco in in our systems here. Oh, okay. And if someone wants to be really on top of it, go get a swimming pool test kit and keep the water where, where you would your swimming pool, and it'll be fine mm. by adding in. But we use glyco 90% of the time here. Okay. And then, then that's not an issue. I'm sorry, but what is glyco? Because I, I don't know what that I, is. It's some kind of antifreeze. I don't either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is some kind of an antifreeze that 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 uh, is stable, and it doesn't do that. Gotcha. But you're absolutely right. With our hard water, if you did nothing, you would get a calcium buildup, and it wouldn't be a good thing. Well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad uh, I asked though, because yeah. I'm sure other people think about. When I yeah. think of a boiler, I think about water. I mean, I wouldn't have ever thought about putting in refrigerant. That would have, yeah. have occurred to me, or yeah. not refrigerant rather, but a- antifreeze. Antifreeze. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which even makes more sense because that was the thing my neighbor was running into. Like they have a hard time going on vacation because they need somebody to manage their boiler. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I, there's a lot. There's an open system and a closed system. An open system is usually an outdoor wood-fired boiler that they throw wood in and they kind of heat the water, and then that that hot water comes through and goes through a heat exchanger, goes through the house and heats the house up, which works great. There's a lot of people that do that, and those wood boilers it started being popular about 20 years ago, and you see a lot of them. My father has one, and and they they work great. Uh, those are a little harder to maintain. So if you put glyco in one of those, and now you have water evaporation because it's an open system. Mm-hmm. And so, so then that's when the little uh, maintaining the water with a, a, a simple swimming pool kit uh, works great. Okay. Uh, and and I'm not really familiar with where you want the pH and all that on that. Because sure. Yeah. I just know that that's how it's done. Right. Um, but the closed systems, which is most of them today. Uh, you, you don't add or subtract water or anything maybe once or twice a no not even that often they they, they uh, and then there's a way to add water if you need to but it's all closed and it just it circulates and you put glyco in and the one here at caribou uh we put in um 20 years ago yeah more than that we put it in like 25 years ago and we've had no, no issues at all. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, this was a great conversation. Yeah. yeah. I always yeah. learn so much when I talk to you. I love having you on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good deal. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was educational at the, at the least. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Caribou Creek or check us out on Facebook. Thanks so much.